Hello. So if you watched my last video or you follow me on Instagram, then you probably know that I got a chemical peel last weekend. And while I was fully aware that part of getting a chemical peel is usually your skin experiences peeling afterward, I did not think ahead about what I was gonna do in terms of like filming a video while my skin molts off my face. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but definitely got some peeling going on here, a little bit on my cheek. Most of it's happening around my mouth. Point being, I haven't been able to put makeup on this week and I'm not supposed to put makeup on until I stop peeling. But the bright side is that means you end up getting a really juicy video today because I'm taking you through my entire current makeup collection. This is actually pretty good timing because I recently did a massive makeup declutter where I got rid of more than half of what was in my makeup collection. And I know some of y'all are gonna be disappointed that I did not film that part, but I I wanted to go fast. I wanted to make snap decisions so that I could declutter as much as possible without second guessing myself. But that means what's left is the best of the best, what I really loved in my makeup collection or products I rediscovered along the way that I want to use more and test out. So today you'll see what survived the purge and yes, about 98.5% of my collection is budget-friendly drugstore makeup. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new here, hi, I'm Miranda. This channel is all about budget beauty. If that's your vibe, hit subscribe. All right, let's go into my first makeup drawer. So this top one is kind of eyes and brows. We have liners, mascara, and brow products. And then over here, I have like random accessories, eye jewels, and tools like tweezers. So let's just kind of go through the eyeliners that I kept. And believe me, even though this looks like a ton of liners, I literally decluttered more than half of what was in this little bin. Also, these are actually actually kitchen drawer organizers that I got from the Dollar Tree. And they came, I believe they were all in a set of two. So the long ones were a set of two, the short ones were a set of two for a dollar 25 or whatever it is at the Dollar Tree now. So, okay, just cause they are on top, I'm gonna pick up these Moira glitter, glitter liners. And they are absolutely my favorite way to add glitter to any look because it's just easy to paint it on and it doesn't create any fallout. The glitter doesn't get anywhere you don't want it to be. So I have this first shade called Pink Aurora. And this is definitely the one that I use the most. As you can tell, it's the one that's the most empty. This one is like pink holographic and it does have chunkier glitter in this one. And I just find it really, really fun to either kind of dot on over eyeshadow or to create an eyeliner look with it. This one's called Super Sparkle and this is like a typical silver holographic liner, really, really pretty. And this gold one is called Stellar. Now this gold one and the silver one, they don't have as chunky glitter particles as the pink one, but the gold one is the most fine. So you can really create a nice sparkly liner with this. Okay, let me gather up probably my most owned eyeliner. This is the Essence Stay and Play Gel Eyeliner. This is probably my favorite pencil liner formula. It is sort of a, an upgrade from the Essence Extreme Lasting Liner, which I've talked about a lot on my channel. But with this new formula, I feel like they've really improved the texture. It's definitely a lot creamier. And you also have more time to smoke these out versus the Extreme Lasting Liners before they set to be waterproof and long lasting, but they are just as budge proof. And I definitely favor these and they're still under $5. I wanna say they're $3.99 or $4.99. They did end up giving us more shades in this formula. Love, love, love this green one. It's called Emerald Dragon. I'll just give you a quick swatch. How beautiful is that? And I gotta say, I feel like these do get a lot closer to rivaling the um, Urban Decay liners just because of how creamy they are and pigmented. Now, my second favorite pencil liner formula is definitely the ColourPop BFF Gel Cream Liners. These are slightly 
less creamy than the essence ones, but they are still very easy to work with. But the, re oh, the reason why these are definitely up there as favorites for me is because they have a lot more color options in terms of like bold colors. So I do have brown. This one's called Brouhaha, which I do use a lot. However, I usually grab these when I want a gel pencil liner in a fun color. So here, this one is called Piggy Bank. Like so pigmented, completely opaque. It just glides on. And these do last, especially when it's over primer or over eyeshadow, they last all day. I have a feeling my hand is gonna be real red <laughs> with all these swatches. I also have my jumbo eye pencil from NYX in here. This one's called Milk. I typically like to use this as an eyeshadow base, not necessarily an eyeliner. This used to be like the eye primer that every beauty YouTuber used online. And I still find it helpful in some situations where I want a little bit stickier of a base and I really want a bright eyeshadow shadow color to pop. The white really helps bring out those shades. I have a few liquid liners from Moira. These are their eye-catching dip liners. So I've got a few of these bold shades that I've worked into some looks. Now what I really like about these is that it's a thinner formula. So there's a pro and con to it. First of all, brush tip. Look how nice and precise that brush tip is. The thing is, the formula is really thin, so it's not necessarily super opaque in one go. You do kind of have to layer it up for it to not be as transparent, although it doesn't look as sheer as this when you have it over um, eyeshadow. But the reason why I kind of make the compromise is because this is a much thinner and more flexible formula than some of the bold liquid liners at the drugstore. Those are so thick and creamy because they want it to be opaque, but then throughout the day, they end up like cracking and looking really crumbly and gross. And with these, even when I layer them up, I never have that issue. Also from Moira, I have one of their gel pencil liners. They're statement gel eyeliner. This is in baby pink. And this is like so high impact for a light shade. Like that's very, very opaque. It just pops off the skin. Such great quality. I've, I said in my last video, I've really been reaching for more Moira Cosmetics products lately because a lot of them are outperforming drugstore and they're cheaper than drugstore prices, especially when you use my code, which is slash beauty, 15% off the whole site. Okay, what's left over? I have three liners from the Marilyn Monroe Wet n Wild collab. There are two pencil liners. I actually really like this brown one. And I think I might've said it in my video about this collab, but this feels like a different formula than their breakup proof liner. So I don't know what I'm gonna do when they stop selling this collab because I love, love, love this brown liner. They also have a white one and this is just the only white liner that I ended up keeping in my collection because again, I like the formula. Really nice and creamy. And then surprisingly, I really enjoyed using this double-ended liquid liner that was part of the collab. I don't know if this is their, just their breakup proof liner in, you know, fun limited edition packaging, but it is this double-ended style where there is a felt tip on one end and a brush tip on another. I don't necessarily know why I would need both in one product, but it is nice and black. And even the felt tip side, I'll give it to them. You can get very clean lines with it. I'm gonna keep this until it dries out. And there are just two other liquid liners that I decided to keep. I've really been enjoying the look of brown liquid liner. And the one that I've been using is the ColourPop BFF liquid liner. This one is again, felt tip, but I don't know, everybody got the memo about felt tip liner sucking and they've made them better <laughs> because this felt tip has not dulled or anything. And I've been using Using it very, very heavily. So this one is a nice chocolatey medium brown. It is called Grande, like coffee. Perfect for the latte makeup look. And then I have this black liquid liner from Physicians Formula. You know, I'm still testing this out and trying to figure out if I like it or not. It is their super slim liquid eyeliner. I will say that the brush tip is so skinny and precise, probably the skinniest that I've ever seen, but I don't know if I'm like a huge fan of the formula quite yet. Okay, so as far as the mascaras go, I definitely, again, this may look excessive still, but I 
threw out so many expired mascaras that I wasn't using that were definitely past their prime. First off, we have the, okay, this is, this is a lot. Why am I trying to juggle? We have the Panorama from L'Oreal. This is definitely my go-to mascara right now. It is super smudge proof, even the non-waterproof version. And it just gives me so much length and lift. I actually prefer this over the L'Oreal telescopic lift. I also have two of the Essence Lash Princess mascaras. They did recently release it in brown. And like I said, I've been really enjoying using brown eyeliner and brown mascara, but I will say this brown is almost black. Like I can't really tell a huge difference when I use this versus the black, but it's just nice to have that option. Another one of my favorite drugstore mascaras is the ColourPop Level Up. Now this one is in brown and I find that it's a lot more obviously brown when I apply it. This has been my go-to when I want a little bit more of a natural look, but I still want my lashes to be like long and fluttery. Now this mascara, it, I kept it, but it's definitely almost past its shelf life, but but I have been using it a lot. This is the Lottie London Super Fake Mascara. You can find this at Walmart. And this is definitely like a dramatic mascara, a lot of volume, a lot of length and definitely underrated. It is, I believe under $8, which I mean, to be honest, at the drugstore, mascaras are going up. So very, very affordable for a dramatic mascara. And then this last one is relatively new in my collection, the Maybelline Total Temptation Mascara. This one, I believe it's got like a fat wand, yeah. So I kept this just because it's relatively new, but I gotta say I have not been reaching for it a lot. I wanna give it a second chance. So that's why I kept it. Got a few pairs of AOA Pro false lashes. These are definitely my favorite strip lashes. They are so affordable. I want to say they're like $5 or under, um, but they look so luxe. They absolutely rival higher end falsies that I've tried from like House of Lashes, Lily Lashes, etc. They are so fluffy. They do not look plasticky at all. So in this little drawer, I have brow stuff and eye primers. So I finally threw out that crusty tube of Milani eyeshadow primer that I've been using and I want to use these ones up that I just had open. I have one from About Face. I have one from Alter Ego. And then this is the one I've probably been using the most, the Moira Waterproof Peptide Eyeshadow Primer. I mentioned in my last video, it's very thin and hydrated which just feels good on my eyelids. As far as brow gel goes, I have this NYX brow glue, which is one of the most um, stronghold brow glues that I have or brow gels, but you can tell this used to be clear and it's definitely gotten like tinged with brown. So I don't know if maybe next time I should just buy the brown because this looks kind of nasty, <laughs> but I keep it for when I really, really need my brows to just lay. This is probably my most used every day. You've seen it in a ton of my videos the Physicians Formula Butter Brazilian Brow Lift Brow Gel. Such a mouthful, but this is a really nice like medium hold where it definitely holds your brows in place, but it doesn't look or feel like crusty and hard. I actually kept more brow gels than I expected. Maybe I need to do a second pass. I've got two Benefit Guinea Brows. They're in different shades. I think I accidentally bought a number five when number six is a little bit more cool toned, but these are great when I just want a really quick fill. They are tinted and these are absolutely like waterproof, fade proof. They last all day. When it comes to like higher end products, Benefit brow products are ones that are always worth it to me. And then they also have this 24 hour brow setter, which this is like my favorite, favorite brow gel ever. But again, it's expensive. I only get it when it's part of like the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, but this brow gel is clear and it seriously holds your brows in place, but it doesn't feel like you have product in them. I have two other clear brow gels. This is the uh, Wet n Wild Mega Clear Brow and Lash Mascara. I I think actually I have not used this on my brows. I've only used it as a clear mascara. Wasn't super impressed by anything it did. So I was like, whatever, I'll just use it as a brow gel. And then this one is definitely almost past its prime, but I think there's still some life in it. So I just want to empty it out. The um, Wet n Wild Brow Sessive, it's okay. I, I'm literally only keeping it because I'm almost done with it. And I, you know, I don't want to totally waste it, but it's not super high hold or anything. It just kind of tames things down. I also have the e.l.f. Brow Lift. Now, this is one where I want to rediscover it or restart using it because it really does work very well, but I've just noticed that with this jar 
packaging, it's kind of hard for me to scoop it out. And I do have a specific brush for this. This is the actual brush that is designed to be used with this, the brow lift applicator. And you're supposed to like scoop some out with a little spatula and then get it on, you know, get it on the brush or you can try to dip the brush in here as long as the product is high enough. But I don't know, it kind of became a little inconvenient for me. So I stopped using it, but there's still so much product in here that, you know, I just want to get it, get it done, get it over with. I have two brow pencils that I'm trying to finish right now. The Moira Precision Brow Pencil. I talked about this in my last video. It is a really nice fine tip brow pencil. And I mean, it rivals most of the ones that I try at the drugstore. And then I have this one from AOA. This one I like a little bit less, but again, I'm like almost done with it. This one's just a little less creamy. So I feel like I kind of have to push in a little bit more to get the color payoff. And I do have an AOA powder. I haven't really been a big powder brow girl lately, but I want to play around with it a little bit for the more natural effect. And then I have this e.l.f. No Budge Cream Eyeshadow, which which may seem out of place because I don't have eyeshadow in this drawer. I have it in my next one, but this is a white one that I typically use as a primer or a base, kind of like the NYX uh, jumbo eyeshadow pencil. And then in this drawer, I'm not going to go through every single thing, but like I mentioned earlier, I have a lot of little eye gems, which I really like adding to my look for a little pizzazz. And then I have some tweezers, some pencil sharpeners, and brow razors, etc. So this is just kind of like a little utilitarian tool section. So that is the first drawer. Let's go in to the second one, which is eyeshadows. Now these are going to be like my mini palettes, my eyeshadow sticks, single shadows and like cream eyeshadows. So I have my bigger palettes in a separate drawer. So in this section, you can see we've got a ton of color pops. So most of my eyeshadow singles, I would say, are ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. I would say my most used is Mighty Morphin. This one is like a gold champagne and I love just putting this all over the lid. It's a little bit more like sparkle forward than pigment forward. So it just creates this really nice ethereal look. It's like a gold with pink shimmer in it. And then my second most used, this one is called Degaff and it is a bronze with gold shimmer in it. And this is one that I would definitely, oh, bronze or copper, what would you call that? This is one that I would just put all over the lid and call it a day. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like a warm coppery shade but that's, that's definitely a favorite. Um, some other ColourPop products I have in here are the Jelly Much Eyeshadows, which are a gel formula that dry down to be super budge proof. My favorite is called Shiny Penny. This one is like, a greenish copper, like almost like a tarnished penny. So it's kind of like a very thin cream formula. So see how that kind of like shines green? but in general, you have more of a copper pigment behind it. I love that. I think it is so cool. I have a couple of their glitterly obsessed body glitters. This was from their Lost in Love Valentine's Day collection. I haven't really worked these into looks yet. I feel like I would for something special, like a concert, music festival, etc. Some more Super Shock shadows. I have another No Budge Cream Eyeshadow from e.l.f. This one is in the shade Sand Dune. It's kind of like a cool brown. And this is one that I like to just use as a smoky brown. Just put it all over the lid or you could even smoke it out as a liner. Really creamy, as you could see, it blends really nicely. But then once it sets, it's there all day. And then the last ones are all Moira Cream eyeshadows. The Moira cream shadow that y'all always ask about. Whenever I wear this, I get comments, what are you wearing on your eyes? It is their um, Everlast Shimmer Cream Shadow in the shade Mocha Bronze. And I think it just looks so romantic. It's almost like a bronze with um, like a pink undertone to it. And these remind me a lot of was it L'Oreal or Revlon that had mousse eyeshadows? I forget, but these feel so creamy and moussey. So I will just go ahead and blend that all the way out on my eyelid and it just creates this really pretty smoky effect that's not too strong. All right, this next little bin are all of my 
shadow sticks and crayons. I would say there's probably like three main brands you'll find here. So the first one is the ColourPop shadow sticks. Now these were kind of reformulated. They used to have, I think they called them eye sticks and they were similar, but they sucked. And so they discontinued those. They released these and these are a way better formula. They're so much more creamy and blendable. They have both matte options as well as like shimmery metallic options. This is probably the one that I use the most, which is called Bear With Me. It is just a matte mauve, really, really pretty all over the lid for a very light look. But then we also have kind of these bolder shades. This one is called Flex, which is this kind of neon, like dinosaur green. I don't know what else to call it, but hello? So pretty. The next chunk of this collection should be no surprise. It is the Milani Gilded Eyeshadow Sticks. I did a video all about my favorite eyeshadow sticks and I did like smudge tests and everything. So I will link that in a card. These are the two that I pair together the most. So we have Sand and Terra. And y'all know that I love a good um, halo eye. So what I'll do is I'll blend Terra in the inner and outer corner like this. And then I put Sand in the middle and it creates this really pretty cool toned halo eye. Obviously it looks better on my eye versus my hand, but that's the general gist of it. And then finally I have these Maybelline color tattoo sticks and I'm missing one. I had a purple one that I literally just used in an Instagram video and I think it might be near my filming space, but um, these I'm warming up to because I was very salty that these were kind of taking the place of the color tattoo jars. I've loved those ever since I started wearing makeup, but I've grown into liking these a lot. They are easy to work with. And just like the jar formula, these last all day and you can use these without primer and they will stay smooth and crease free. So here's one of their shimmer shades. This one's called I Am Courageous. And this one is mostly shimmer versus pigment. You can kind of see a little bit of like bronzy champagne underneath. Really, really pretty. Their matte formulas though are super creamy. Like really nice and pigmented. This one is in I Am Determined. And you can see it just blends out so nicely. Those two are actually really pretty together. Now behind this divider, we have a few kind of random bits and bobs. I have this Physician's Formula Eye Lifter. I've actually really liked using this. Um, for like weekend trips because it is this brown cream eyeshadow and then this pink highlighty shade and it's really easy to just create a simple eye look with this and just have your whole eyeshadow routine right here. And then I have these Moira, what are they called? Chroma light shadows. These are multi-chromes where, you know, depending on how they hit the light, they're gonna look a little bit different. I did a video on these on Instagram. And these types of eyeshadows where they are very shifty, definitely a rising trend this year. And then I also have a ton of these About Face liquid eyeshadows. I worked with them last year and these have definitely been a learning curve. At first, The first time I used these, I hated them. I was like, I don't understand. They're so crumbly and gloopy, whatever. But once I figured out using the built-in applicator is not the best way to apply them, putting it onto a brush and then applying them makes them so much more workable. And then you get a ton of pigment, lasts all day, even through humidity and sweating and dancing and concerts, which is what they were designed to do because, you know, they're designed by Halsey for Halsey. So I have several of these. Let me just swatch this one. This one's their matte one in Dionysus, a really pretty like springy mauve. I mean, super, super pigmented. Here is the yellow, which is actually pretty impressive because of how pigmented it is and how opaque it is. Crazy, right? So these um, I would suggest because there are about, they're, they're like $16, which I would say it's mid range, but they do often um, pop up during like Ulta sales. And then this long container in back has my mini palette. So I actually just bought this one. I have not used it yet, but I put it like right on top. So I will, the CoverGirls clean color eyeshadow. I actually really love CoverGirls eyeshadows. I think they have a great formula for the drugstore, but I haven't tried the clean ones. I'd only tried like their kind of um, long pan ones. So had to pick that up. Uh, of course, I have the Wet n Wild Color Icon palettes. I have this one in Walking on Eggshells. 
this has gone through so many versions. Like Walking on Eggshells is such an OG eyeshadow palette. It used to be a trio, then it was a quad, now it's a five pan. This has always been in my collection since I was a teenager. Sundays, really pretty warm orangey red. And then this is their uh, Marilyn Monroe collab one. And to be completely honest, I like the Marilyn one more than Walking on Eggshells. I feel like it's a little bit more well balanced between tones and finishes. This one I went back and forth on whether I should declutter, but I decided to to keep it. It's one of the little mini naked heat palettes. This is just like a little mini naked palette with warmer tones. Of course, I kept a few of these Essence mini eyeshadow palettes. These are like $4 and the formula is incredible. I tried to keep the shade ranges that I don't necessarily have in a lot of other palettes, especially this taupe one. I feel like a lot of people ask me about cool toned palettes and like this is such a good cool toned gray palette. It's very unique. I really don't see any other drugstore brands putting out these types of shades. Maybe ColourPop, but this is literally like less than five dollars. Oh, I have a little hidden e.l.f. bite-sized palette. This one is in jalapeno, hot jalapeno. And then I did keep all of my Milani Gilded mini palettes just because I talk about these so much. I think they are such great options when you're looking for a very concise, easy to use palette that's very portable. I love this one. It's Call Me Old Fashioned. It is sort of like a cooler neutral palette. This black is beautiful. This brown is beautiful. These are probably my most used mini palettes. On to the next drawer. All right, we've reached my complexion drawer. Now this one was definitely a huge declutter moment because I was holding on to so many foundations that I had tried a few times and then didn't really like, or they were just the complete wrong shade. I also had so many old, completely expired and crusty uh, concealers, which is so embarrassing, but I, I decluttered way more than half of this drawer, like at least 75%. So y'all know that my most used foundation product right now is the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour skin tint. It is so natural. It has buildable coverage. It's comfortable. It lasts all day, even through sweating. So 118, you can see is like the more empty one. This one is the one that matches me the most right now. I did end up keeping 120 just in case for the summer because I tend to get more of like a pinker, deeper, undertone when I start tanning in the summer. So you can definitely see the difference in skin tone. I also keep my e.l.f. Halo Glow liquid filter in here because if I'm not using it as like a primer, then I'll use this as a skin tint. It doesn't add a ton of coverage, but it's just enough when I want to stay relatively bare faced, but this kind of wakes up the skin. My second most used foundation product is the L'Oreal True Match. My shade is N3 light neutral medium. This is like a perfect skin shade match for me. So compared to this, a little bit deeper, I'll usually use like a uh, bronzer to make this match me better. But this is what I'll reach for when I want something just a little bit more heavy duty than the skin tint. I just love how natural this looks on the skin, but it gives me pretty much full coverage. I ended up keeping two powder foundations. And as I work on my skin and I'm getting these chemical peels and facials and stuff, as my dark spots lighten up and when my skin is having like a good day, sometimes I will just reach for a powder foundation. And there are two that actually feel comfortable on my combo skin. So this is the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. This has really good coverage for a powder and it feels creamy on the skin. So especially as someone who does deal with like dry spots, this doesn't accentuate them as much as other powder foundations do. Um, the shade that I have is light. 280N and I would say this is maybe slightly slightly deep for my face but it works and then the other one I have is the Maybelline Superstay I've definitely used this less but I want to use it more I have the shade 220 I've actually been using this a little bit more as like a setting powder I just find that the elf one has a little more coverage which is why I've been using this as a setting powder while also maintaining more coverage. This is a foundation that I rediscovered during this process. This is the Revlon Skin Caring Foundation. It is super, super radiant and dewy. I think I stopped using this because it's not the best shade match for me. This is the shade Toasted Beige 309, but I can make it work if I pair it with some concealer. So I just wanted to start using this again, especially as my skin is feeling a little bit drier. This is the foundation that impressed the sock 
socks off of me in my last Shop Miss A video. This gave me such good coverage. It lasted really well throughout the day, it gave me a really nice smooth finish. And I wanna say this was like $4, $5, something really, really cheap. And then I just have this um, sunscreen powder, the Mineral SPF 30 Brush On Defense from Mineral Fusion. This is something that I grab uh, when I know I'm gonna be outside and I wanna reapply SPF over my makeup, especially for things like outdoor music festivals. Um, I've used the, the Derma E one, which I also like, but this one's a little cheaper on Amazon. Okay, as far as primers go, I seriously decluttered this. There is only four products in this little uh, container and I had so many primers that I just was not reaching for. And technically one of these products is a serum that I just kind of use as a makeup, makeup primer. This is Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow. Nice into my dew drops. Technically this is more of a skincare product than a makeup product, but I got it as a gift with purchase at some point and I like to use it under makeup because it does have like that tacky feel that reminds me so much of the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, the niacinamide version. I feel like these are very much like, this is the budget alternative to this. It's just that this is like more makeup-y, this is more skin carry, but this I wouldn't use like at night because it does have a little bit of like um, shimmer to it, I wanna say, or there's, there's just something in here that's, oh, I'm almost out. Maybe I do, oh no, there we go. I feel like when I put this on, I can actually see added radiance to my skin in the form of like micro shimmer. I don't think it's gonna show up on camera, but um, yeah, that's why I feel like this is much better under makeup versus like part of a skincare routine. The only other drugstore primers that I kept are from e.l.f. So I have my two power grip primers. I have the niacinamide version and the regular version. Um, this one's a newer tube. It's not like I like one more than the other. This is just what I've been using more and then I'm gonna switch to this one. These are water-based primers, so they work well with all types of foundation besides like powder. And they just do the most. They really, really keep my makeup in place even through long days, sweating, whatever I'm doing. And then the other primer that I have is the e.l.f. Woe Glow Primer, which has the added 30 uh, SPF. This also does extend my makeup, but it's not as heavy duty as the Power Grips. Like these are not, these aren't lightweight primers. Like I feel like you can feel them on your, on your skin. They're thicker, but they do the job. When I'm trying to wear a little bit lighter of a makeup look or it's just a more casual situation, this is what I'm going for. Concealers, again, I did not keep very many. So I have three peachy concealers that I use under my eyes. So I have the LA Girl Pro Conceal. This is more of a matte concealer. So if I'm not looking to add glow and I really just wanna color correct, this is the one that I use. And then I have two from Milani. The supercharged under eye tint is definitely less coverage and it's more about adding glow and a little bit of color correction. And then the Conceal and Perfect is more coverage, a little less glow. I also have the LA Girl Pro Conceal in green for concealing red acne. And then I have two actual like skin color concealers for my skin tone. I have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer. I've used this so much that there is no longer a label on it. This is in Light 50W and I really like the corresponding foundation, the Pretty Fresh foundation. The reason why I don't currently have it is my bottle was empty, so I decluttered it. And then I've actually really been liking this AOA Studio Locked Creamy Concealer. This was like $1.55 on Shop Miss A. And I've been using this a lot to like clean up my brows or my eye looks. It's slightly light for my skin tone. So I use it a little bit more in a creative way versus like concealing my dark spots or whatever. Now I didn't do such an amazing job on decluttering my powders. I did keep quite a few. Probably my favorite most used from the drugstore is the Honest Beauty Invisible Blurring Loose Powder, though this is, it's expensive for drugstore. I mean, it's like, you know, clean beauty brand, etc. but also the formula is absolutely elite at the drugstore. It is so fine and soft 
and powdery. I love that they have the um, fabric sifter, which I feel like makes things a lot less messy. However, when I don't want to use this or I want to suggest something a little bit cheaper, I have definitely been liking the Milani Conceal and Perfect Blur Out Powder. This is very similar in that we have the fabric sifter. Also has a very, very soft, finely milled powder formula. So when I finish this Honest Beauty one, I think this is going to end up being my go-to. I also have just this Wet n Wild translucent powder. This is definitely more for finishing the whole face. I use the loose powders when I want to bake and I want to make sure that I am crease free in like my expression lines and my under eyes. But with pressed powders like this, as well as the Rimmel Stay Matte, this is more so all over just to kind of give my, my foundation and face makeup a little bit of reinforcement. I've got two more loose powders here. I have the Revolution Banana Baking Powder. I like this, it's brightening, but I, I'm not a huge fan of the packaging. As you can see, I've used a decent amount, but I just don't like, like what am I supposed to do with this? It's like a baby powder thing. I try to put it in the cap and it still just gets all over because this cap is so small. But you know, I find ways to work around it because I do like this um, product. And then I have my mini Laura Mercier. This is my absolute favorite high-end setting powder. It makes my skin look totally airbrushed. This mini, I want to say, is like $28, $30 or something like that at Sephora, but I bought it because it really, really, really puts in hard work for special events, things where I'm going to be photographed, etc. And that's the complexion drawer. All right, next we have my blush drawer, which is still very crowded. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but when I tell you that this drawer was out of control. <laughs> we'll see. I, I might have to declutter this again and, and do a second round and see what ends up sifting through, but this was my first attempt and when I tell you that this is in much better shape than it was. So up here we have some cream formulas. So I have the three ColourPop cream blushes from their Lost in Love collection. I mean, these are very new in my collection. This one I've been using the most lately, Adore You. So freaking cute. Like if you're gonna get anything from this collection, get these blushes. They're so beautiful. They blend on the skin really well while staying super pigmented. Also from ColourPop, I have their blush sticks, which are probably, I gotta say, these are probably my most used cream blushes. They're just really easy to pop on. I would say my most used is Invite Only. It's this mauve and it's got a tiny bit of shimmer to it, really, really pretty. I've got this Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush. This one is in the shade Nude Kiss, just a really nice neutral, kind of warm mauve, I guess I would call it. I have two of the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blushes. This one is in St. Lucia, this one is in Maui. Really like these, although I do find that these formulas are kind of drying out on me in this packaging, and I keep them really nice and tight. I feel like this packaging is is nearly identical to their um, cream eyeshadow, but for some reason these are just a little bit stiffer than the day that I bought them. <laughs> Takes a little bit of extra effort to blend it out to be more even, but still beautiful, beautiful shade. Uh, what's left in here? Oh, I have one from Honest Beauty. This is their Cream Cheek Lip Color in Plum Berry. This one is also kind of drying out in this tin packaging. But look how beautiful that color is. And this is one of the very few cheek lip combos that actually feels decent on the lips. And then what's left in this one is just my little Rare Beauty Cream Blush in Nearly Neutral. Selena knows what she's doing with this makeup line. Really soft and weightless on the skin. So I typically use this because it is a little bit on the sheerer side. I'll use this for lighter makeup looks. So over here I have the liquid formulas. Again, I have two from Rare Beauty because I was trying to dupe these with the new e.l.f. liquid blushes and they are totally dupes. I do have a whole video comparing them and doing a wear test, so go check that out. And then I have the Milani Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush. This is another one for fall that I like, Berry smooch. I tend to like these sort of deeper plummy shades. How crazy is that pigmentation though? 
And then I have this AOA plush blush. I think, I think I used this in my last Shop Miss A video. This is the one that literally looks like <laughs> nail polish, but it actually looked really nice on the skin and lasted. And lastly, I have this Pixie Liquid Blush. This is their Sheer Cheek Gel. This is so natural looking. You can also use it on the lips. It just adds the faintest hint of color. So really nice if you wanna use it on bare skin or just over a skin tint where you don't want it to look like you're wearing makeup, but you do wanna add a little bit of color to your face. See how subtle that is, but it adds a glow, it adds the color. Also from Pixie, I do have their On The Glow blush. This is obviously super, super viral. You've seen a lot of people use it. My favorite shade is Ruby, which is this like strawberry reddish pink shade. And then I also have one of their um, On The Glow bronzes, but like, in what world is this shade a bronzer? I mean, maybe if you have super, super pale skin, but even then it still leans like really pink. So I've liked to use this as like a highlighting blush when I want something a little more subtle. I also have this beautiful Winky Luxe blush. Now I'm gonna admit, I don't use this often because it's just so pretty. <laughs> and I know that like, that's not a good reason to not use a product because it's meant to be used, but like, come on. So I want to challenge myself. The reason I kept this is to actually use it soon. So kept that one. And then here is another plummy one from Flower, their Gel Crush Lip and Cheek. This one is in Blackberry Crush. I would say that these are similar to the Pixie on the Glow. Like, a lot of pigmentation, a lot of glow. I do find these to be a little bit easier to blend and work with than the Pixie Blush. Super underrated from Drew Barrymore Flower Beauty. Now, my little sad powder <laughs> powder blush moment. It, it's so interesting because like a few years ago, it was complete opposite. Most of my blushes were powder. And now just with the, you know, clean skin trend and the glowy skin trend, I, I really do prefer the look of, of cream and liquids. But right on top, we have this blush that I talked about in my last video, the ColourPop Pressed Blush from their 1111 collection in Claim It. This is the one that popped out so I'm gonna be a little, a little bit careful with it, but it is just this neutral sort of warm beige. I have two more from that collection that I like. We've got one that's a little lighter. Now this one, I will say it's a little light for my skin tone, but I wanna make use of it. It's more pink. That one is called Good Energy. I really liked this collection, the 1111 collection. And this one is Message Me, which is a deeper warm terracotta shade. Then I have the Revolution Blusher Reloaded in Rose Kiss, really pretty deeper rose shade. The Physician's Formula Strawberry Jam. This is one of my favorites during spring and summer because it's just a really beautiful bright pink that adds like a youthful color to the skin. And then also from Physicians, I have their Butter Blush, the matte one, the matte Minoy in Mauvey Mattes. And this one can be a little bit tricky because you have different like colors within the compact. So you really have to make sure you swirl your brush around and get them all evenly. I have three of the Milani baked blushes. And of course we've got Luminoso. That one is probably my second most used. My most used though is Rose de Oro. It's a bit deeper than Luminoso. I feel like it really goes with my skin tone best. We've got this warm pink with the gold shimmer to it. Let me see. It's kind of hard to do powder blush swatches. Really pretty. This one was another rediscovery that I haven't actually used all that much. This is the Catrice Air, Br Air Blush Matte Blush <laughs> in Spicy Space. Kind of just your run of the mill mauve, but I wanted to give it a shot, so I kept it. And then I have two ColourPop Super Shock Cheeks between the sheets. It, it, it does end up being a little bit lighter or like more subtle than you would expect from looking at it in the pan. So I do have to layer it up a bit, but when I get that color, I love it. And then this one is like a shimmery kind of copper blush drop of a hat. And I feel like this one is a lot more pigmented. Like this shows up immediately and I love the glow. Still, still very well stocked in blushes. I'll admit it. <laughs> Next we have my highlighters and my bronzers. Now I did just publish a YouTube short several days ago where I go through all of the highlighters that I kept and I 
I swatch every single one. So I'm just gonna do this part really quickly and I'm not gonna do swatches because that already lives here on YouTube. You can go watch that. First of all, we have a couple from ColourPop that I kept. This one is in Flexitarian, which is this really beautiful neutral kind of champagne that's not too warm. It matches nearly everything. And then just for something fun and different, I have this one in Hippo, which is this pale lavender. And I love using this for just bolder looks or to pair with plummy blushes. It just adds such a fun little unexpected pop. Oh, here we go. This one, of course, you've seen it. I've talked about it several times. This is my all-time favorite highlighter that I'm wearing most of the time when you see me. This is the ColourPop Light Sticks in Glazy. Again, kind of a neutral champagne. It is maybe the slightest bit warm and golden, but not really. It matches nearly everything, and I just love this formula because it melts into the skin and just beams. I also decided to keep this Physician's Formula Butter Glow Liquid Highlighter. This is for the face and body, which is why it comes in this huge tube. This is gonna last me forever because you don't need a lot. This has more of a pink undertone and a dewy finish, and it looks very natural on the skin. I did go ahead and decide to keep the Marilyn Wet n Wild Highlighter. This one is so flashy and sparkly, and it's definitely not an everyday choice for me, but I think that it'd look really nice in the right situations, special, bold, makeup looks, etc. I kept the Milani Conceal and Perfect Highlighter in Lunar. This one is definitely more of a true gold highlight. And then I have the Revolution Highlighter Reloaded in Raise the Bar. This one does remind me of the ColourPop Light Sticks, just in a powder version. And then finally, I have this $1.55 highlighter from Shop Miss A. This is their Glow Within Illuminating Powder in Wish on a Star. It's kind of like a light, pale gold, it's very dreamy. So like I said, you can check out that YouTube short if you wanna see swatches of all of these. Now we have the bronzers. Again, this may seem like a lot to the normal consumer. And you know, friendly reminder for all of these drawers, this is my full-time job, making content about makeup. So I totally acknowledge that this is crazy <laughs> in terms of like the normal person's bronzer collection, but this gives me variety to use in my videos. And, and again, this is after I decluttered stuff that I wasn't using. So, okay, we've got another one of these Pixie On The Glow bronzes. Now this one I haven't used a lot, but I wanted to give it a chance. I wanna throw it into the rotation. And this shade is definitely more of a sun-kissed, glowy, type of bronzer. I wouldn't necessarily use it to contour with. You can see how glowy and reflective that is, which is not necessarily what you want for contour, but this looks great around the perimeters of the face uh, to just add that like sun-kissed glow. I have the new Milani Cheek Kiss bronzer, cream bronzer. This is a new release from them and I did review these on my blog. I don't think I've talked about them on YouTube quite yet. It's hard because I actually really like this formula, but the shade range was a little underwhelming. So this is the lightest shade in this product. It's called Hey Honey, but this is the only one neutral enough that I can actually use to contour. So see, it's not like super, super warm. The other shades in this line did look orangey on my skin tone. So with this one, I can bronze and contour with because it's kind of in the middle there. I think they totally nailed this formula. It's so easy to blend. It lasts all day, but I would have really liked to see some more uh, contour shades. One of my most used drugstore contours, this is the Revolution Cream Bronzer in Medium. And even though this is supposedly a medium shade, it's actually pretty dark, but this is like the perfect cool toned product to contour with. And you can see the difference here. Let me swatch, hold on. This is Milani's liquid contour, and this is labeled contour. This is not labeled bronzer, so you're supposed to be able to create shadow with this. This is called toffee. And you can see that difference in undertone. This is so warm. This is this is what you want when you're creating shadow and definition. With that said, I still kept Toffee because I do like this formula. I do really like this Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer Contour Palette. You get a little bit of a warmer shade along with a cool shade. I like never use this beige shade. I, I, I honestly am not quite sure what it's for because it's not sparkly, it's matte. So I'm not really gonna find myself highlighting with it. I, I would have really liked if it was just the, the warm shade and then the cool shade. Another really good powder contour, the AOA Studio Perfect Bronzer Powder in Cold Brew. Again, 
they got the cooler undertone correct. So that works to contour with. I've got the Physician's Formula Matte Minoy Butter Bronzer. Now this one, this one's in matte deep. It is definitely on the warmer side. I think I could have done a better job decluttering these bronzers now that I'm sitting here with you. <laughs> Y'all have seen this one, probably my most used liquid contour. You can see that I'm definitely on my way to using it up. This is the Moira uh, Face Sculpt Liquid Contour in the shade Soft Warm. Even though it says warm in the name, this is way cooler than a lot of the other uh, contours I have in this drawer like you see. I've got two of the ColourPop bronze sticks. One is a little bit more contour friendly. This one's called Laguna Beach. You can tell that one's definitely a lot cooler. And then this one is in Shell Beach, which is more of a warm bronzer. Because this is a lot deeper than like the typical bronzer I use, I actually reach for this. If I'm using a foundation that is too light for me, but I wanna make it work, adding this in like around my face will help kind of even that out. I have the L'Oreal Infallible Bronzer. This is another one where I haven't used it in a while, but I wanna add it back into my rotation, which is why I kept it. This one is in light medium. To be honest, I kept this one because it's waterproof. And if I ever just need that, especially in the summer, it's nice to have. Okay, lastly, I have the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. This is in the shade Honey Drip. A little bit more of a neutral brown, but again, this is definitely becoming more stiff in the pot than when I first originally bought it. So that's Honey Drip. And then this is the ColourPop Soul Body Bronzer, although I will admit I use this on my face too. This one is in medium. This is nice if you are kind of uneven tan wise and you want to even stuff out. I've used this on like my shoulders when I'm wearing a strapless dress or shirt, but I've also used it on my face without any problems. Even though it is fragranced pretty heavily, it reminds me I don't know, it just kind of smells fruity. Um, but anyway, I have used this on my face because I actually really like the shade. So I feel like after a couple weeks when I see which ones I'm actually reaching for, I'll probably do a second declutter of this section. I, I kept a lot, I kept a lot of bronzers. Next we have the first lip drawer. Now this is looking a little janky because it's so empty. This type of like, cubby system is really dependent on you having each section full so that they stand up. But uh, yeah, I definitely decluttered a lot of this. I have three whole empty sections in back. So for the lip liners, I'm gonna say like 80% of what's in this basket is the Milani understatement liners and the ColourPop lippy pencils. Those are my two favorite lip liner formulas. The only thing with the ColourPop lippy pencils is I really do not like <laughs> that I have to sharpen them. I much, much, much prefer the retractable lip liner style, which is probably why I do reach for the Milani ones the most. And then I do have a couple from Revlon. Oops. The Revlon Colorstay Longwear Lip Liners. Those are really long lasting on me as well. So I have a couple of those. But yeah, most of this is Milani and ColourPop. So we've got this whole front section of nine <laughs> Maybelline vinyl ink what is it called? Vinyl Ink Liquid Lipsticks. So I do have a whole video where I review these and I also tested them side by side with the Urban Decay, what are these called? I forget what these are called, Vice Liquid Lip Colors. These are like the exact same product. Not only is Maybelline and Urban Decay owned by the same company, literally these are the same freaking product. They're like the shake to activate glossy liquid lip colors that are transfer proof, etc., etc. But with these, and something that I didn't know when I filmed my review video, is that you really need to wipe off the excess with these. Don't over apply them because then they'll feel sticky and they will transfer. You really wanna apply these in super, super thin layers and then you get that glossy finish that doesn't move. My most worn, I wanna say is lippy. Yeah, this one. So you've gotta shake it and then wipe off as much as you can. These are so pigmented that I swear you can wipe off everything on this wand and there will still be enough for an opaque application. So it stays shiny like that but then it becomes totally transfer proof. In the cell behind that, I've got all of my ColourPop lippy 
sticks, ultra blotted lips, ultra glossy lips. This is just kind of like where I keep all of these so I can grab them quickly when I'm specifically looking for a ColourPop product. I would say out of all of these, the blotted lip formula is my most worn. I feel like it's super comfortable. It's got like transparent, like slightly sheer color payoff, but it looks so good on the lips. Still an icon. Definitely my most worn. You've seen me wear this in so many videos. This is like my Your Lips But Better shade, and it's just got that soft finish to it. I also really enjoy their lippy sticks, and usually these are the ones that I get as like trios or duos um, during the holidays, because Target will have these paired up together in value sets. This one is in Trust Me, most beautiful red. Oh my gosh, talk about like a blue-based, rich holiday red, you know what I mean? And then this well right here, besides the Urban Decay, is all of my lip oils. So I've got a couple from ColourPop, I've got e.l.f., I've got Lottie London. I do have a video ranking popular lip oils from the drugstore, so go ahead and check that out for a little more insight on the ones that I really like. Um, I did keep a couple that I wanted to use more that I haven't necessarily necessarily used a lot. The Catrice liquid lip balms, I haven't, I guess they're not lip oils, but they're liquid lip balms. Um, they used to have a different one called the Powerful liquid lip balms, but I think they replaced them with these. They're called Marbalicious. Look how beautiful that is. And it's supposed to be a super cushy, creamy, moisturizing formula. So I wanted to keep that. Um, also love these Flower Beauty Plump Up Gloss Sticks. Again, I feel like Flower Beauty is so underrated. Not a lot of people talk about them, but they've got some pretty cool products. So this I want to say is like a shiny tinted lip balm that looks like a gloss but is so much easier to apply because it's in like this pen style tube. This is the shade Toasty, one of my favorites. Such a good neutral. And then this one is just clear. But these feel so good on the lips. I'm pretty sure there's some oils in them. Um, back here I have some stains and plumpers. Again, I did just do a video on drugstore lip plumpers. I did keep a few just because I like how they look. Do they actually do anything? You'll have to watch that video to find out. I did end up keeping I know this was like, I, I was very critical of the NYX fat oil because I feel like it is way more of a lip gloss than a lip oil and the brand even calls it a lip gloss all over their website. But I did actually like this shade that I picked up, which is called Follow Back. It is this beautiful warm gloss with a ton of gold shimmer in it. So I did end up keeping it even though it's not what I'm going to reach for when I want to actually have a lip oil. I will say though that their fat oil sticks are way better. I feel like these actually uh, feel like a lip oil on the skin. They're moisturizing, they're not sticky at all. So if you want more of that like skin carry aspect, get the sticks and not the tubes, liquid, whatever. I have a few of these Amazon lip stains that I just got and I really want to test them out and review them. These have been so popular on Amazon for like a few years. I don't know how I escaped actually trying them. They're called Ink Velvet Lip Stains and I know lip stains are just becoming super, super popular. I see them all over TikTok. So I want to find like the most comfortable, long lasting ones. I mean, that's a beautiful color. So um, these are a new addition that I want to test more. So that's why I have them in here versus I do have like a whole other cabinet with PR packages that I have not opened or makeup that I have not opened. But when I move them into these drawers, it means that they're like in my rotation and I'm using them in my daily routine. The reason why I keep them separated is because if I'm like, like doing a donation, I need to, to take them from the unopened products because shelters and like charity programs, they will not take open makeup. So that's why I keep them separate. I've got a few of my NYX butter glosses, definitely classics. I also have these Fenty gloss bombs in several different formulas. This came as a trio during the holiday season. Fenty always does a trio of their gloss bombs and it's so affordable compared to buying one of these full price. I think it was like 45 for three when usually one of these is, I don't know, like over 20 bucks. So that was a really cool opportunity to try these because they're so popular. And I do like to keep some of these high end products in my collection for sale recommendations and dupe recommendations. And then I have two of the e.l.f. lip stains. I have Berry Queen. I think I got this last fall. Mm. 
Beautiful. And then this one I think is like a brown shade, Cinnamon Dreams. Those stain so fast. Look, I'm wiping it off. It's been on my skin for less than 20 seconds. And that, the, the brown one's definitely not as long lasting, but look at that berry shade. And then over here I have more lip oils. Most of them are the Milani Fruit Fetish Lip Oils, which are probably my most worn. I definitely gravitate more toward their neutral shades, especially this one, Coco Cacao. You can definitely see I've used a lot of that one. My second most used is Blackberry Agave. I just love how these add a little bit of that deep, sultry look to your lips without being really in your face or dramatic. And then I have a few Moira lip oils, which these are actually surprisingly pigmented. These are definitely more of of a hybrid between lip gloss and lip oils. Like that is so pigmented. So if you want like the benefits of a lip oil, but you want the pigment of a gloss or liquid lipstick, the, the Moira Glow Getter ones, those are the ones to pick up. And then the ColourPop lip oil. So again, if you wanna see more about lip oils, check out my lip oil video. Okay, lip drawer number two is so empty. This is crazy. This is the emptiest this drawer has been, I think. So this is my bullet lipstick drawer. So like traditional lipsticks and I decluttered so many that I just was not using or I didn't like the formula or they were expired and they literally looked nasty when I when I twisted them up so this drawer mostly consists of Milani and Revlon like those are kind of my two favorite bullet lipstick brands so right here in front I have the Revlon color stay suede ink lipsticks these are such comfortable mattes they feel so lightweight and they're super long lasting so let me see gut instinct is one that I wear a lot and in the zone and breadwinner gut instinct I wore during a wedding that I was a bridesmaid in it is just that perfect perfect pinky nude. In the zone is a little bit deeper, kind of a plum, beautiful for fall and winter. Breadwinner is the most beautiful blue based red. And you can see how creamy those went on, but they do give you that flat matte finish without feeling like crusty matte. And then I have a few of their super lustrous lipsticks. This one I wore in a video recently, Rumberry. Love this for like grungy looks because it is a reddish brown. So pretty. And then a completely different mood. This one, wait, not this one. This one, Afterglow. I just used this in my little YouTube short where I was wearing peach makeup because peach is the color of the year. This is a really pretty peach with golden shimmer to it. And y'all know super lustrous lipsticks have been like the top drugstore lipstick for so long for good reason. They are super comfortable, super pigmented. I, I wouldn't say they're like incredibly long lasting because they kind of keep this shiny finish. They don't like smear or feather. They just, they definitely transfer though. Also in front here, I have a couple of the e.l.f. O Face lipsticks. I cannot use these anymore without laughing because if you saw the new Mean Girls movie, e.l.f. was like all up in that movie with the product placement where they literally had Katie say the full name of this product as if anybody would say that. They were, she was like, oh, I'm just using the e.l.f. O Face lipstick in this shade. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Anyway rant over. It is a nice lipstick. I have two shades. I have No Doubt and Vocal. No Doubt is kind of like a cooler beige shade. Really nice for like latte makeup looks. And then Vocal is a little bit more kind of a red orange. I will say these feel really luxe. They have the uh, magnetic caps. Like they feel super high end. Elf is, Elf is killing it in making their products seem high end, but they're still affordable. I have one color Riche lipstick from L'Oreal. This one is a nice nude shade called Nude Determiné. Determine? No, it's it's definitely Determiné because there's like an accent over the E. <laughs> so it's just like a slightly warm neutral shade. This I have to put back in my purse. This is usually in my purse, but I was just cleaning up and trying to gather all my products to do my declutter. This is my CoverGirl Tinted Lip Balm in Bliss You Berry one of my most worn lip products lately. It definitely rivals Clinique Black Honey. Okay, back here, all we've got is Milani Color Finish. This is one of my favorite drugstore lip products. Um, I do prefer their matte version. 
version. The matte version is so pigmented, so creamy, so long lasting. I just think this is one of the best bullet lipstick formulas ever, like even high end. Look at this. How freaking beautiful is this? This is the shade Dahlia. This one is in Fleur. I mean, it is one swipe color. One swipe, totally opaque. These do stain, so they leave um, they leave color behind and they are long lasting in that way. Here's Poppy. This is probably my most worn. This is one of my favorite reds at the drugstore. Ugh, classic blue based, rich. And you get this matte finish, but it feels like a cream lipstick. It feels super balmy on the lips. So this, Milani's got the secret to, to matte lipstick. As far as the balm formula goes, I definitely don't reach for these as much, but they are a great option if you're looking for something a little bit more glowy, but you still want the pigment. So that one is called Fantasy. This one, as far as the balms go, this is probably my most worn called Lingerie, kind of a medium rosy shade. And then over here, here I have a few high-end lipstick formulas, again, just so that I can reference them when I want to dupe or if there is like a holiday value set that I want to say, hey, I've tried this lipstick and I like it. So first I have this NARS Afterglow Lip Balm. I'm pretty sure this actually came in a Sephora birthday gift. I love this thing. This is something that I will throw into like a clutch for a special occasion when I don't have a lot of room. Okay, my whole palm is really pink. So I'm going to try to swatch right here. It's just a really nice tinted lip balm. And this is in the shade Dolce Vita. And then I have a few from YSL because for some reason <laughs> I am on their PR list and I'm not going to complain. Um, this one is the Volupt Shine number nine. And this one... <sighs> There was a dupe, there was a drugstore dupe. What was it? Oh, it was the Revlon Super Lustrous Glass Shine Lipsticks, which I don't know if they discontinued those because I really can't find them many places anymore, but it is a really pigmented, shiny lipstick. And those were like one of my favorites from Revlon, but I, I just can't find them anymore. Um, so I, I will keep this one to see if I can find another drugstore dupe. But as you can see, it's really like wet and balmy. And then I have two like full-sized YSL uh, Rouge Pure Couture lipsticks. I have 59, not necessarily the most flattering for my skin tone, and 17. That one's really pretty, kind of like a coral. And finally, last drawer, my palettes. Now this is another one where I was very selective about what I kept because I'll be honest, I'm using a lot of mini palettes and singles lately. So when it came to palettes, I wanted to keep the ones that I know that I'm using, that I'm actually using regularly, and ones that add something different to my collection. So here we have the Moira Magic Dreaming palette. This one is relatively new to my collection, but I just love the color story here. It's definitely like blue and purplish based, but we've got a few neutrals here. I just did a, an eye look with this in a YouTube short that I love. Love how it came out. Just something a little bit different. I was back and forth on this one. I, I was thinking about giving this away to uh, a friend because it, they no longer sell this. This is the Morphe Vava Bloom. Got this a couple years ago because I wanted a really nice like pinky palette for those romantic looks. It's kind of like a pink neutral palette, but like I barely used it and then it got discontinued. And this is like what I'm talking about in my last video about how like new products are coming out too fast where then like we can't even use what we have before it's all about the next best thing. You know what I mean? But I did decide to keep this because Again, I'm trying to just keep what I like and I'm gonna make looks with it. And you probably have something that looks like this or maybe you even own this palette still and you're getting good use out of it. I just gotta get over that mentality of like, y'all won't care if it's not new. That's that's kind of the misconception that I've had. And I'm so glad to hear in the comments of my last video that you don't mind me using older products in videos. So then I've got two Alter Ego palettes. This is an online brand, super affordable. I wanna say these palettes are like $15, $20. This one is called Harmony. It is definitely more of a sultry kind of pinky neutral. And then I have Sakura, which I did use in a video. And this one's like very cool toned turquoise.
turquoise green. Very unique in my collection and I want to challenge myself to use these types of shades more. I have my ColourPop Lost in Love. This is their newest Valentine's Day collection. I have a whole video on this collection as well. And then speaking of ColourPop, like I mostly kept ColourPop palettes because they are one of my favorite brands in terms of eyeshadow palettes, especially the ones that are very themed because like I don't need any more blue eyeshadows. I've got the Blue Velvet palette. Love, love, love the Deja Brew palette, especially with this whole like latte makeup trend. But this is a really nice cool toned brown palette, which you cannot find a lot in drugstore brands. Plum Season Perfect Purple Lover palette. I really liked the 1111 collection. I do have like a live video replay of me unboxing this collection. I wore this in a wedding as well because it's got some really beautiful mattes and then just pops of glitter shades. A nice balance between cool and warm tones here. Peach Out, I've been wearing this a lot lately because again, peach is the color of the year and this has really flattering peach shades. And then Vibe Check is, it's kind of similar to Plum Season, but it's got more neutrals to balance out the look versus doing like an all purple eyeshadow look. I've got the NYX Ultimate Warm Neutrals palette. This is the upgraded version. So they did finally <laughs> redo the formula in these mini palettes that they sell. Is it worth $20 still? No, but this remains like one of the most popular best-selling eyeshadow palettes at the drugstore, which is why for work purposes, I feel like I need to own it, but I will say they've definitely improved the shadow formula. I was talking earlier about the CoverGirl eyeshadow formula. I think that it's super underrated at the drugstore. You can find these palettes between nine and $12. And I have repurchased specifically the Smoky palette three times because I think it is just that perfect, cool tone, smoky color palette. When you want the silvers, you want the deep blacks, you want like the gray taupes. Oh, this one is actually from Sigma. I haven't really shared a lot of their eyeshadow palettes, but they have these really cute nine pans. And and honestly, it's this gold rush shade for me. <laughs> this is probably the main reason why I kept this palette because hello. I've made jokes in the past about getting a palette for one shade and this this is that palette. They sent that to me, but I'm, I'm keeping the palette for one shade. <laughs> also on that peach bandwagon, the Milani Luminoso palette, this like, I hate the packaging. I think it looks so cheap and weird, but it does have really pretty peach tones based on the Luminoso blush. I have a whole video about this collection that they launched based around Luminoso, but I thought that I would get more use out of this this year because I am kind of trying to embrace the peach each. And then I have my color icon larger palette from Wet n Wild, their 10 pan. This one is in Lights Off, which is kind of like jewel tones. Love this beautiful green. It's matte, um, but we also have these like cooler champagnes and silvers. We've got this kind of slate blue. And again, this was just something a little bit different in my collection that I don't have in other palettes. Really good matte green. I mean, that color payoff and then really pretty silvery blue. So this is definitely one of their more like unique color stories, which is why I've hung on to it. And then back here, I have a couple more from ColourPop. I totally forgot about this palette. So doing this uh, declutter helped me rediscover the Smoke and Hot palette. And this is like a warm orangey red palette. Super awesome for summer and the beginning of fall. We also have some of these like plummy shades. Look at this one, Habanero, so Pretty, that is gorgeous. So really glad that I got to rediscover this. And then Smoke and Roses, I've showed this a ton of times. This is definitely like a muted rose gold type of palette. It does lean cooler. And I like this for just softer feminine looks. And then finally, I have this Revolution Infinite Bronze Maxi Reloaded Palette. This is such a great jumbo palette for beginners when you just want to add a bunch of shades to your collection. You really want to kind of test out what you like. I believe these are under $20. They're like around $15 to $18 at Target. And I gotta say, the formula is not bad. I know a lot of people rag on Revolution's shadow formula, but you also have to keep in mind, Revolution bought BH 
Cosmetics. And I feel like their shadows have gotten better since then. <laughs> the mattes are really creamy and pigmented. They absolutely remind me of old BH Cosmetics palettes. The metallics are soft and super, super flashy and pigmented. Like this is absolutely nothing to scoff at. And so again, rediscovered that I have this in this drawer and they still sell it at Target. It's one of their core jumbo palettes and I want to make more content with it. Just because it's not new does not mean that it's not exciting for under $20. Seriously. The quality is there. And then back here, I just have um, a couple empty Z palettes. I don't really do a lot of depotting anymore, but I keep these around just in case like magnetic makeup comes back in style because they were expensive, these things. And that concludes my entire current makeup collection. Whew. That was a doozy of a video. If you've made it here all the way to the end, what I'd love to hear from you in the comments, now that you know all of the products I have in my makeup collection, what do you wanna see me use? What kind of looks do you wanna see me create with these products? Like I said in my last video, I really want to start doing more like makeup inspiration videos and not solely focusing on reviewing the next best thing. So let me know what piqued your interest in the comments. Today's shout out goes to Dorky Sophie. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad and join me over in this video next, which is a chatty get ready with me using all of my go-to budget-friendly makeup at the moment. I'll see you over there. Bye.